I'm also a very emotional person. And it is not a laughing matter. Sure you get. And if you remember Dino, you will remember this. All these ones are just popping up now. You know, you know, internet, no, they forget. You remember this one, Abi? APC, they never forgave Dino for this. They talk about me looking like that and all that. But it is what it is. I don't know what these Ibira people are singing. They said they composed this for Dino too. I, I don't know what they are singing. <laughs> They are APC. I mean, I see that all the time. It's just that uh, after this old drama and all of that, right? Eh? It go come be like carnival. Everything go come car for everybody's eye, everyone's eye. The reality will set in. Then they begin to say, eh? After we did all of that, and now this country is very tough and all of that. It is. Hmm. But it their choice so to say so in uh Bayelsa, their own election is inconclusive they have declared that ododo winner in uh, kogi so yeye Belo have succeeded to inst i mean have succeeded in installing his own stuji the guy already won 11 i mean they've already declared a level local government for him but you know how they arrive at that dino sorry Sorry, 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 don't cry, don't cry, Dino. Sorry, sorry, don't cry. That is what uh you know an unjust system is like, and why you should reject it. Don't join those who believe that you know what I mean. It could be your turn tomorrow, or you this one would soon be out of favor, it could be our turn, then it could be this and it will be that. You can't live your life like that. Are those who are part of the system now that they will begin to speak as if to say they are on your side until they have their ticket, their meal ticket back uh, to the table? Don't fall for that. Ask for something better. Break up the shit hole. It is very easy. Say it. Break it up. Say it. Eh? Break it up. You see all those solutions they are giving you. Don't just think it. I want you to say it and tell yourselves. If we love Nigeria, let's break it up. Or else, the charlatans, they will continue to have their way. And you will continue to, to pay for that. Whether you supported them or you didn't, you continue to. In Bayelsa, it was meant to be like a easy, an easy ride, an arrangement like I told you. The Yebelu will have his way. Hopeless is or Dejo will have his way. Diri uh, will also have his way as PDP. Or it be like, say, somehow, somehow, they are scared of APC, eh? breaching the agreement. Because according to them, they've declared their six local government areas. 
and it is like Diri, the PDP guy in Bayelsa, the people that have now made Bayelsa State the second poorest state in the entire Nigeria. The, the entire local government in Bayelsa no reached 10, no, I've been 11, no, 11 local government so areas, so very small space, so with billions and billions, tens of billions of uh, Naira that they actually have to accumulate in. That was supposed, that should be enough to at least to make life better in that place. People destroying people, 24 years of people destroying people in charge of the place. Anyway, the dirty guy is afraid. Probably they were going to short change him. Or maybe the people are just the ones who are not just uh, understanding. Hang on, oh, they were on the streets. I think this one is emo. <laughs> There's no real job, there's no real economy activities in that place. So most of uh, the money uh coming from either thirteen percent derivation or coming from the federal allocation, the loans that these guys takes, and some subventions they get from the oil companies. This is just, just go and be governor, and then, you know what I mean, sit down and share the money. They have problems when the money is not properly shared uh, to every quarter. So it's like turn by turn, and that's what Bayelsa is. That is what most of uh, the Niger Delta part of Nigeria has become fine. You see a lot of investment uh, coming from those who came to invest uh, in the petrochemical uh, uh, sort of uh, things there, no doubt, okay? But when it comes to the real government working in Niger Delta, part of Nigeria, investing in uh, the real economy, the social economy, infrastructure, and the rest of that, creating jobs, forget it. That's not something that. And poverty in that part of Nigeria is not overemphasized. Being the second the poorest state in Nigeria is a textbook definition of what corruption can do. The level of ruin and destruction corruption can bring, used by Yelsa, have been told that their local government in that state is just eight local government areas. You heard it right. And guess what? The entire by Yelsa state, including their land eh, and everything, they probably will fit in into one single local government uh, area in uh, or your states i mean i'm not over exaggerating no sorry if you're from by it's a small space right in the creek but yet they continue to milk the money yeah they want pdp to continue it doesn't really matter in that part so sure you get whether it's pdp or apco all that matter is that uh, once the money land it must reach everybody from everywhere or else while i day. And whatever you can do with the rest, you can go and do with it. Second poorest. So they are out there. They were out there protesting the possible rigging that they are afraid of. Two local government areas are left to be announced. So they have postponed that till tomorrow. But today in Bayelsa. <laughs> This one is that of uh, emo guys, but there's something I want to share with you in that bias before we go back to that emo. Take a look. <laughs> we, uh, the uh, state uh, return officer is doing this, that party just are not supposed to be there. So that uh, we can just go and then uh, we can please, be doing whatever it is that please, we want to do here. Withdraw that statement. That is not correct. But that's what you said. I have you been said making can, statement can... that party agents, any observation, please don't say that. The fact that we are accommodating you does not mean that you can just 
Who wants to? Uh, well, it's my right. I'm representing the political Please, party. That is not correct. I, I'm representing the political party. I think we should be so more I have a right to be here. We should be more if you are condoning it. It means that, it means that you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are saying that the APC is not supposed to be here. No, 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 no. The That's fact that, that we are here, of all of us are here for the same, but we should be responsible. We are responsible. You can't just throw words to me like that. I'm a responsible. But what, your answer. statement, you, you, you made a remark. I have asked. Just accept the I result. have asked. I said any I was raising my hands. to share with you earlier these ones are out as well as protesters but the IPC <laughs> Celebrating uh, all place uh, so they just uh, re-election, a uh, re-selection. Um, well, good luck uh, with that. I won't drink small tea, uh, but just before we get to that uh, breaking part, right? Okay, now take this one, old body. One of those who usually come around to dilly dally about. Okay, it's not new; it's old. Just an example of uh, another show, Inka. That some of you will say disappoint you, Abi. Bakaro. Have you gone to Ashwaju Bola met Tinumbu for a buy in? He said, Yes, we have reached him and he said, We agree totally. He is going to play ball with them, but there are some things to be agreed upon later. And the week after, Ashwaju Bola's group also fixed the same date. 
in the same Ibadan city for their own summit, summoning all the governors of Southwest and all the others to be there. Who will follow the others? Nobody. Do you understand me? Look, I'm telling you the truth. Accept your humble pie. Eat it. When you were sleeping, Ashbala Bala Tinubu was walking there at night. He secured Lagos, secured Ubu, secured Oyo, secured Oshu, secured Ekiti, secured Ondo, secured Edo. And he says, nobody or there. And you think he labored that much to now say, come and take. No. He's not a fool. Jephthah is not an idiot. Stop all this nonsense about ancestry. You will kill your heroes. And those who can deliver you, you will put them aside and nothing will happen. All these Shakabula leaders, they don't have machine gun. All they have is Shakabula. You know what Shakabula is? Then gone. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. I'm not afraid of anybody. Ojo Benny Koshore and the jury legion pass. Stop plotting, screaming against someone. He had his past. You have yours. Even Pope has a past. Don't let me expose your men of God, though. Because they all have their past, too. And before I expose them, I should look in what I have my past, too. And you do, too. I told him what was not. New Zans, Lily. New Zans, Lily. New Zans, Lily. New Zans. There is, there is a reason why I had to bring that back, okay? Uh, because there are many, many people, they, are, they come in different uh, shapes, forms, and sizes, all right? Some will come as a uh, man of God to come and try and call black, white for you. Well, the point here is this. You need to know this, and knowing this means that uh, knowing the truth, okay? There is nowhere, not even in the Bible, there are Bible there that says that criminals have in any way, okay, done anything uh, good after obtaining something criminally. Sure, you understand? There is no record of them anywhere. If you have done anything that is uh, criminally in the Bible, it's called sin. At first, you must come clean. Okay? You have to come clean. Confess. Then, you promise not to go back to it. Share you get. It is not that you have to leverage on it and say, just ignore my past. The reason why Nigeria is where Nigeria is, is because the past of those who have committed heinous crimes have never really been prosecuted. A lot of them have become who you will call distinguished men and women, honorable men and women, excellencies here and there. It's because their past is in their past. And since they have never really been punished, a lot of them have grown comfortable in the world of criminality, that they are committing serious economic crimes against their country against their people and they don't even see it that way so some may talk to you like your father or like your mom or somebody you respect a lot they come in different shapes sizes and forms to try to force you to accept abnormality the reason why you won't is not because you are a saint in this life we all have responsibilities. Now, when you have criminals who are supposed to be in prisons, who are making laws, executing laws in a country, all you have is going to be a lawless country. And there are times that you need real people to speak out and, you know, mobilize the people against such uh, people having access to power, you cannot sugarcoat it. You can't tell people to move on. Now, you told people to move on because they have their own past. 
my past never puts economic uh, ruins on Nigeria. Greed and selfishness of discriminants have brought on toward you know, economic uh, hardship on the people. And they are still kind of emboldened to do more, sure you know. And then doing more is what is putting Nigeria and Nigerians in a, you know, further and further in a very terrible place. So when they come to you and tell you, nobody is a saint, eh? let's move on or pray for him or prosperity. Yeah, Nigeria is going to be so great. We're on that if Numbu. But when you look at the those around him, they are merely propagandisty. Sure you get. So somebody who knows that if Nobu is surrounded by propagandists, is telling you that God is telling him that Nigeria is going to be great under him. Somebody who appointed over 1,000 people, eh? and there is no single economic, uh, our economists among them, the real ones, oh, not Olu Wale Genje, technocrats that they promised you. Boson Tijani, another young man who used to be on this side, among those we call the Bele lecturers. Among my eyes have seen, my ears have, have heard things that I have actually seen these guys done. Eh? I could be a preacher for life and I will never run out of, uh, you know, what to say. Look at this. So on this platform, we know those we call the Bele lecturers, the Mughus, whose loyalty to Nigeria is pretty much idiots eh? and full of hypocrisy. They are waiting for their turn. And they are those who love to project, I love Nigeria, I love Nigeria, I love, I have idea, Nigeria. It's all nonsense. Sure, you guys. You see this guy, Bosun uh, Tijani? He had uh, this uh, community that a lot of young people felt like. Now, this kind of people, we want in our government to go inside and change the government. You know how many people who have told you that? Eh? That what Mayegun is doing is just a waste of time. It cannot change anything. We need people to go into the government and change it from inside. Eh? And you're like, uh, once they go inside, now, they, now, the, now the thing will come change them. Now then one go change the system of the system will now change them. I said, no, 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 no. You'll be a fool if anybody tells you that they have this perfect plan how to rescue Nigeria. So they want to go and join their politics. This this rotten one that we all know how it is structured, right? They want to go in there and do something and fix something. If you believe them, you are, you know what I mean? You are probably like uh, you know. Voluntary slave, they will say, a fool. Sure, you get every one of them is positioning themselves for an opportunity to go inside. So, you see this Boston to journey? Eh? <clears throat> they were among those of us who continue to call out uh, the failure called Bukwari. They've given him a minister of communication. He is now showing the PowerPoint uh, pictures, taking pictures, touched clothes, and all of that. It's called Lou everywhere, and it's now becoming a motivational speaker like uh uh what's that guy's name again the acquire uh, to my maguire that if Numbu appointed recently fella so he is a minister clean cut now he was addressing some of these guys yesterday and he called them you lot will not understand you people will not we have become the you people because he's now sitting down there with the rogues having his own a share so if you still see anybody, they tell you, say, eh, we need to go in there and change the system. They are lying to you. I have seen a lot of them. They are chances. Once they get in, they will call you lazy, stupid, ignorant. They will tell you that you have no idea how government work. I have seen it happen again and again and again. And the moment they are, they are like, a, you know, they're like a, a, a vomited out like that. They will begin to reason normally again. They will begin to sound like, only if Nigeria can work and do this and do that, they will begin to give ideas again. So if you let anybody tell you that they have an idea of how Nigeria is going to work and they are working on uh, doing something together to me, they are deceiving you. Sure you get. So 
Boson Tijani, who is now their communication minister, is facing uh, the backlashes from the people where he said uh, Nigeria data uh, price is the cheapest in the world, uh, not minding that uh, the Nigeria minimum wage is also the worst in the world and all that. So if you let anybody tell you that uh, somehow, somehow, eh, they have this vision or you let somebody deceive you eh, using uh, whatever advantage they have over you. Listen, nobody can run your mind if you don't give them the access to it. That's why I shown you that video of, uh, uh, what do you call it, of uh, Bakaron. Now, before I end this broadcast, make a try, sound like say, I want to give you summary so that all the hours you have spent tonight, you can have something to take to bed tonight because I'm going to call it a, a night soon. Call this one the summary. When uh, people like Confessor Wale Shoinka, who are alive, old man, who are alive, hiding behind the literary icon, okay, to dish out some sort of uh, paid rhetorics, rhetorics that will sort of uh, you know, a uh, uh, blackmail the Nigerians of how they react to how APC have destroyed Nigeria. Okay? If people like him cannot be honest enough to tell his own friends, eh, Tifnumbu and APC that it is their failure, the failure in everything that they have touched that has now given birth to a generation, a generation that, one, they intentionally never invested in. There was no preparation for this generation, no preparation from your generation, Professor. So, Tell your friends. Some of us have sort of uh, envisioned this a while back. I remember when I told my story, when somebody said, my ego, uh, okay, let me put it this way. When I said, I wasn't a journalist. I am not uh, your human rights activist. I am not fighting for you. And I'm actually encouraging you to stand up and be ready to fight for yourself like myself. And if we then all agree to fight for ourselves, then maybe we can break the chain. Because I am more worried that the criminals who are running Nigeria or ruining Nigeria, they have no plan for anyone. You see the children that they are giving birth to today, 2023, in 20 years time, 2043, they will be 20 years old. And in 2043, they will wake up and realize that, you see this APC ruling in this 2023, they have no plan for them and there was never any preparation to say there is a generation that will turn 20 in 20 years time. Because 24 years ago, these rogues, Eh? People destroying people took charge of Nigeria. They had no single plan for the future per se, or maybe they just couldn't pursue it. 24 years after, you see where Nigeria is. If you are 24 years old, your story is similar to what I'm trying to describe now. Eh? 24 years ago, some of us were not born. Some of you who see my video, you were not born, okay? Today you are existing in a country that was less populated 24 years ago. But you were born, the population has grown, but there is no infrastructural development. There is no economical development. 
there is no uh what do you call it uh preparation for you to accommodate your education to accommodate your health care to accommodate your economic need and the rest of that for what it's going to be like in 20 years time 24 years ago no plan now i'm using that now for you that are now matured who now understand nigeria better sure you get imagine those of you who are going to have your own children from now let's say 2023 is when you have your child okay you are young and in 20 years time add that to your current age you see that your child that you're currently paying a nursery fee for nursery school uh, buying small small toy and all of that that child is going to be an adult 20 years old now if i ask you do you trust these criminals that they actually have a plan, a 20 years plan for, the, for your child? Would you say yes? Eh? None. So the likes of uh, Professor Wale Shoyinka should be honest enough to stop finding different adjectives to describe the victims of a failed system and begin to put the blame on them and say, you know, the internet is creating a generation of illiterates. The internet is creating a generation of immorally bankrupt people. That's why he said, while this generation is actually watching their leaders, morally bankrupt leaders, corrupt criminals, election riggers, liars, money launderers, career criminals, they are seeing them. They are seeing all their religious leaders. They are seeing the, you know, the life they are living. People are seeing things. The morality you want them to, to, you know, to show, the question is going to be, Professor Wale Shoyinka, and people like him, where do you think this generation is learning, whatever they are currently doing from, or where do you think, per se, the, uh, this generation is going to learn uh, honest, I mean, honesty from? Eh? Where should they learn it from? They should manufacture it by themselves. Because those of you who we believe came from the generation when, you know, honesty was your watchword, Abby. You were raised to be patriotic, right? Now, if you didn't play active role in all of this, but you are not condemning them, they are condemning you, the people, the victim. They want you to feel less of yourselves. It's called you people in the, I mean, it called you pigs. That's what Shoyinka said. He said, people of moral, I mean, people of a lower, you know, standard. People who are supposed to be in the, in, 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 I mean, in, 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 in the mud, dirty, low lives. The internet gave you leverage that you, low life, can actually come and call him name. Because somebody like me, who is not a doctor, who hasn't written a, or wrote a book? Abi, who has not uh, been called uh, a noble laureate or something like that? So I am a, I'm from the category of low class, low lives. Who is uh, talking to a noble laureate? A noble laureate gave an idea, his own opinion. No? He just gave his opinion. No? You guys are just talking like you are from the gutters and none of that. You see that irresponsible people, irresponsible generation, a failed generation that is still failing, but will not take responsibility. If your papa belongs to that category, I mean, I'm not going to say you should disown your papa, but trust me, eh? you cannot be so stupid and so coward. Eh? So just say, uh, because now my papa talk, I don't want, I don't want to disobey my papa. That's why I believe. I mean, you know what I mean? Eh? We have a generation that believes that somehow, somehow, eh, we deserve what we are getting because that is the best they have to offer. Now that you are reacting that uh, 22 or 23 million children are currently out of school. They're not going to get education. So you are now in 10, 20 years. You would have to deal with those people. So they are not going to die. 22 million. They're not going to just die. At the end of the day, maybe now 15 million of them will survive. 
in 20 years time, those are going to be the product of a failed system that didn't care for them. Just think about that. And if those ones begin to now react violently, eh, since they have been put uh, below uh, the economic uh, ladder, that they have to kind of uh, scrub and scrub uh, the floor, the ground to eat. And they decided not to be using their words to express themselves. Now they want to use their own hands and their whatever to. Because take a look at, I mean, think about that. You're going to be driving in that your nice car. You're going to be relaxing inside that your best nice house that you suffered to build. And this generation of a 22 million, uh, un I mean, uneducated Nigeria children by these criminals who wanted to be respected, who wanted us to watch what we say, careful of what we say, or they will just lock us up and put us in jail. They don't care, right? We are going to be their victims. They're going to be the future kidnappers, the future armed robbers, the future Jaule uh, Akas, the future uh, economic saboteurs, the people that are going to come after our lives. So if the likes of uh, Confessor Wale Shoinka didn't see that, and he continued to go on that traject I mean, trajectory of the, these young people are illiterate, Eh? Internet is making them become this or that. Well, like I said, I mean, you can forgive the ignorance of people like that simply because of transitioning from that uh, generation that used to write a letter and post the letter and wait for months for response to the generation that just have to click their phones and then uh, within it, you know, within seconds, eh? everything they needed, to, I mean, they need to know. Is right there on the uh, on their palm. That's two. That's two different. These are two different uh, generation. So the generation that is yet to take over, using the arms to take over, uh, you know, governments of any state in Nigeria to express their own displeasure. I mean, that generation can still be called the generation that is still moderate, but these guys are going to push all of us to the generation of completely uneducated uh, a generation that will understand one thing, that the establishment is lying to them. That everything else they've been told has been a lie. Even if you think they are not educated, they will understand poverty. And they will understand that uh, the people that brought the poverty upon them will put their children in that same uh, position. And if there's a way, a way to break the circle, even if it's going to be violent, they will do it. So Confessor Shoyinka may not be here anymore that time. And if he is still very much here, I mean, it should be better advice that uh, whatever or however this generation reacts, eh, the criminals who are his friends, who put all of us in this uh, situation, they are not slowing down. They are not giving up. They are doing it even more. Okay? And what is he expecting? that we should turn to North Korea, begin to sing the praises of uh, those who want us dead and having us dead and killed, that people can't even choose their own leaders. Hello? People have no right. They have no nothing. I mean, so they have made it uh, to seem. So if somebody like him is going to call us a uh, fascist and the rest of that, I mean, is most uh, welcome. And I'm just going to say this uh, to you, uh, my uh, listeners, and I'm going to say it just uh, once, okay? If to say these people have a great idea of how a country should be, eh? Nigeria won't be as Nigeria is right now. Now, if you think that uh, maybe you could give them a benefit of the doubt, that, okay, what if they also have a, something good they want to do? Listen, listen. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise, but I'm just going to lay before you the usual facts. And whatever you do with that is up to you. Not because you really have any much uh, change you can make per se, okay? Except you actually make use of the information. Tifnumbu's government is not coming to fix Nigeria. 
you need to bury that thought and that imagination, okay? And their intention, even if they tell you that they have the intention of ending your suffering, their actions have proved otherwise. And for every action, there is going to be, you know, counter or opposite, uh, as they call it, reactions, okay? The Central Bank of Nigeria, or let me say, Nigeria is currently bankrupt, all right? Now, they can't borrow their way to save you. Because even when they plan to borrow, they act on what they write in their budget. Under Bokwari, before they plunged Nigeria, when they were plunging Nigeria into this generational indebtedness and poverty, they were writing budgets. In those budgets, they had no money. Nigeria was bleeding. Nigerians were losing their jobs. Businesses were shutting down. Revenue were doing, uh, revenues were dwindling. They were losing money on uh, crude oil. Here you get, it was a floodgate of corruption. They were milking and then bleeding Nigeria to death, including the foreign reserve of Nigeria. This money, this money is still in the custody and in the hands of these rogues. The fact that they have all the money and they have not been arrested and the money have not been taken, has not been taken from them and they still have that uh, clearance to even take more. What does that mean? It simply means the recurrent expenditure that was taking almost 70% of Nigeria budget, 70% of money they paid to themselves, 70% of money that they paid to those that were actually like, like free money for services they will never render. 70% of Nigeria budget. And they were funding Nigeria budget with uh, over 80% borrowed money. 80% of borrowed money. Now, all of that money did not deliver any meaningful, useful infrastructure that could at least help rejig your economy that could pay for some of these uh, profligacies, some of these uh, plundering and all of that. No, 90% of the budget they borrowed the money for, despite the huge money, 90% of the budget uh, of uh, the projects remain unconcluded. I mean, they've never concluded, I mean, uncompleted rather. So which means, if Nubu and his gang, there is no assets to turn to money to start with they will need to manufacture their own money. And you cannot manufacture money from the blues, even if you are printing money. So here is the problem. Where they couldn't get money to borrow under Bokwari, they printed money. That's what they did. Eh? Where they couldn't print money, they sold whatever government properties they could sell for scrap. They stole the money. Sure you understand now. So Tifnumu believed that they need to print money. So they are already printing money as you are watching this video, okay? They also believed that they can always uh, borrow their way out of this too. So they have also continued to borrow. Just everything that Bokwari did. And what are they borrowing the money for? What are they printing the money for? For consumption. Consumption in the sense that money being used to buy luxurious uh, cars, for them uh, to pay for Esther code for foreign trips. You know what I mean? Uh, money being used uh, as, uh, what do you call it, to pay salaries. Monies being printed and shared as allocations. And as these monies are landing in different parts of uh, the country, so they share them to printed money, borrowed money. The criminals who are going to receive all the monies across Nigeria, they immediately will begin to package as much as they can package from them, turn them to Forex and take them out of Nigeria. It's just like a monthly ritual. So Kalu believes that they can use the situation of Nigeria to get more money. And as they are getting the more money, they are sharing them. They're not putting them inside your economy. They are not. And I don't even know how to explain that to you for, for that to make sense to you. You cannot borrow money to go and do party. You cannot go and borrow money eh? to go and marry another wife. You can't borrow money 
to go and build yourself a mansion that you are going to need to also service that is not indeed yielding anything for you. You cannot borrow money to spend it. You borrow money because you are going to actually, you. I mean, because you can turn it around, all right, into something productive so that uh, you pay back the money, you pay back the interest, and your investment still remain. There's nothing wrong in loans. But when you borrow it because you want to use it to fund the lifestyle of the rogues, and you are telling the people that you are working day and night, you are inviting investors, you are inviting this and that to come and do businesses in Nigeria. Or you are not presenting anything different that they are going to say, oh, uh, this one is different. You are not. The world knows this. And if six months is not enough for you to see the difference positively of any government, you will never see the positive. And it's not because I don't wish you to see it. It is because this is not coming. It is a fluke. It's a fraud. Their actions have shown that they are going to spend more time on propaganda, on telling you what they are doing, that you should wait for them to conclude. Just give us more time. Just wait. We do economy. So at the end of the day, you're going to stop. I mean, you're going to be tired of waiting. And then they're going to tell you that they have done so well. If not for them, your life would have been worse. Just same way Bokwari was telling you until he abandoned and then escaped there from your sight. So if the people who knows the consequences of this, eh, the women, the children, the aged, the vulnerable, the sick, the youth, who are victims of these uh, failed people, these criminals. Eh? If those of you who knows they are victims, you should never join the bandwagon of those who want to keep them shut, who want to complain about how they talk. Understanding all of the circumstances that brought everyone to this stage, right? So you shouldn't be hypocrite about it. Because when you are hypocrite about it, people can see through you. And it doesn't matter. There's nothing sacred about anybody. All of these old people who love to talk about their age and respect, they should just go and they should just go to hell. Because I mean, eh? How much has that uh, really helped anyone this time around? If you are using it to blackmail us, how much has that helped anyone? It won't. So the bottom line here is this. If they cannot keep their mouth shut, they shouldn't try to gaslight us, tag us, and then tell us that we don't know how to talk. We don't. Uh, it is not the internet. And that's one thing I also want to add. It is not the internet or internet culture that turned the young people to being rude. As a confessor would like to say, it is not the internet culture. And we are not illiterate. We are even more educated than majority of you would admit. Because majority of the things you don't want us to see, or you never believe that we will see or come across. A lot of us have come across them, and we are so disappointed that a lot of you older people lied to us about Nigeria. And you are still lying to us. And we understand why now. Here you get. So we are not illiterate. We might be illiterate to all the lies you've told us, but we are not illiterate. And these generations are not reacting because of the internet culture. It is because we, are, we have discovered the charade, the lies. And we have discovered that uh, your generation have no real respect for anybody. You don't have respect for yourselves. You have no respect for anybody. You have no regard. You are so entitled that uh, some of you are parading archaic achievements, old glories that you've not been able to replicate or anybody replicating them after you. I became a professor. I, I was the first, I was the first professor of kinetics in Nigeria in 1960. I was the first, it was the first female, female lawyer in 1921. Old glories. 
But look at the country that you have all, uh, you all grown old inside. Look at the shit all that you have managed to build as a country. You get what I mean? Old glory that can never be replicated. That has never been, they've never been really replicated. So we are not illiterate. And we are not influenced by the internet culture. We just feel so sad that it took this long for majority of you to unravel. And disrespecting those who have disrespect, I mean, disrespected us for so long, all our lives, those who didn't give a damn about us, your friends. So they are the reasons why we talk the way we talk. Tell them, oh, it is not the internet that influences you. You are not an illiterate for understanding what Nigeria truly means. Everything else you have read, everything else you have been punished for not following because of Nigeria have been, they have all been lies. And that should be painful and sad. And if you are reacting because of that, if you decided that no, no sacred cow or no sacred place or no sacred person, if somebody decided to want to play on your intelligence because they want a signature of a literature laureate for some books that uh, this generation probably will never read. You understand? If they decided to use that to rub it on your face and say, oh, I've, been, I've been a pastor for 25 years. You get what I mean? If they decided to want to play on your intelligence, don't let them do that to you. Do you get? Because this is a bunch of uh, failed generation that are so irresponsible that even when their failures are staring them on the face, they would rather find something else to blame. The generation that enjoyed the uh, quality education, when the society will pull money, the resources together and send them on, uh, you know, international uh, scholarship, well, local scholarship to go and study abroad, where people could do that and count on them that they will come back good. They all came back as a disaster. They destroyed Nigeria. And Shoyinka was talking about Nigerians abroad, Nigerians all over the world, in science and this and that. A deluded uh, old man who is still living in his own deluded, uh, warped mind. And he decided to think, living on those old glories, where those Nigerians who have left Nigeria are doing better. Eh? When they left, when they leave Nigeria, you get what I mean? A lot of them that you are trying to plug them from everywhere. Oh, the number one scientist that, uh, you know, carried out uh, the first safely separated conjoint uh, photos in their mother's womb and safely delivered a Nigerian man in New York. Ask those who are do doing the same uh, medicine in Nigeria, what their lives are like, what they are facing in a rotten system a system that continue to do everything to frustrate them and make them, turn them to sadistic uh, animals as well. Eh? Oh, look at this. Uh, this Nigerian uh, just developed a great software that he just sold to, he just sold to Facebook. Oh, a Nigerian just developed a massive software that does blah, 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 blah. And he just sold it to Tesla and he just got paid 1.5 billion. Oh, look at this Nigerian, uh, uh, you know, uh, he said the, the, the world's uh, greatest uh, boxer. He was uh, born in Nigeria and raised, he was born in the UK, raised by Nigerian parents. When those who can actually excel in that category, like I'm saying this because many, many of those, they want to pluck and say they are, they are proudly Nigerians are not in Nigeria, unfortunately. They never achieve all those things until they left Nigeria because the criminals in Nigeria, they the, the, the ruined institutions in Nigeria continue to destroy the future, the lives, aspiration, and dreams of so many, many Nigerians inside Nigeria. And then you see them as we have Nigerians educated. If you go to if you go to London, if you go to Harvard, if you go to Oxford, if you go to you see Nigerians who are educated, that is a Wale Shoyinka, who is also a friend to the criminals who are currently. Eh, breeding 22 million uh, out of school children. He's not alarmed by that. Now, if you now say, eh, 
Now Google kill every one of these people. Now shall, shall Google kill them. These mad people. Look at their look at their out of school children. I hate these people. You useless people. And all of them they will say, look at the language you are using. Internet is influencing you to react like that. Don't let anybody gaslight you that way. Do you understand? And don't worry. If this is your first time on my Egon's Diary Political, that's how we do it, okay? Uh, especially on the Sunday sermon. I can go here, go here, go there, go there, pick story here, pick story there, and then come back to something that you may sit down there and be like, okay, this is so much. Or you won't live without understanding the point of uh, the conversation. The point of the conversation is that uh, your reactions to what is going on in Nigeria right now, how you react is legit. Cause them, abuse them, fire them, use any language you want. You are reacting to the failure of the criminals who are doing everything to sniff life out or snuff life out of you. And if your voice is what you still have right now and they are uncomfortable with it, let's see how they are going to be when you begin to even use more than your voice to go after these criminals. Somebody said that uh, NSAS was not announced. It was impromptu. Nobody was ready for it. And what's going to hit Nigeria that's going to be worse than NSAS it's also not going to announce itself. I said, that is fine. When they push you, you will react. And they have no right to tell you how you should cry. You can't beat a child. And at the same time, tell him on, I mean, how to cry. So if Professor Wale Shoyinka indeed uh, wants people to have a reading culture, a lot of people have seen that those who didn't go to school, they can easily forge a certificate and say they went to school. And there is nothing anybody can do about it. Okay? If you are involved in crime and you go into politics in Nigeria, all you have to ensure you do is to make sure that uh, you do everything within your power eh, to gain power. Once you have the access to power, it doesn't matter anymore. And the likes of uh, Confessor Wale Shoyinka cannot continue to tell the citizens that the way they react to the way the criminals are governing them eh, is their fault. It's not your fault, too. And it will never be your fault, especially if you have been those who have been speaking out and always speaking out, like myself. So thanks for coming uh, to the TED Talk tonight. I will see you some other night. And we should begin to take our calls back from tomorrow. Listen, I was having a chat here with uh, the leaders of uh, the Yoruba Union today. And in our deliberation, because we are kind of uh, like taxing ourselves, pulling our resources together to get some things, uh, you know, sort of uh, finalized and done when our members can begin. Like you can voluntarily now go uh, onto the yorubaunion.org uh, and register as a member, get your membership uh, number and sign up uh, for your own uh, membership uh, monthly dues and all of that thing that you would normally do. And we intend to, so we decided to kind of pull our resources together doing that and we're having a chat around how people now see nigeria especially after this whole charade in this 2023 i said i don't know how uh or what really led to that kind of a spark and change when obi and the obedience sort of gave a lot of people uh the uh inspiration to want to give nigeria another shot maybe they can save nigeria Sure, you get like I don't know how they managed to, but immediately the rigging and the whole thing was concluded, and you are where you are today. That I have noticed that a lot of people, I mean, maybe it's just on my platform anyway, a lot of people have gotten to a stage that uh, they can talk about Nigeria, they can mingle with other people and talk about this, but they don't want their penny or anything. They don't want to have anything to do with anything in Nigeria anymore. And I can tell you this. It is not just on my Egun's diary political. It is actually general. I don't know why. But I kept kind of linking, I keep linking it to that of the aftermath of the charade. A lot of you are so disappointed that even if they show you somebody who is about to die of hunger, with, the, with your church mind and godly mind, something is still going to make you want to ask, 
let us ask the, the person where they, they where they supported. A lot of you still want to know who they voted for. Even though you didn't participate in the election and all that too. But you are so pissed at all you've seen. And even though we might say the APC, rig or rig dear, but there are actually people eh, who put their lives on the line to ensure that APC regains power. No matter the situation they are going through, no matter the hardship they are going through, they actually wanted the APC and they did everything with their power to make sure that APC is what uh, you have in Nigeria today. Share you get. So and there are so many of you who just couldn't really, 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 really deal with that. And you would rather just look at them and be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't feel comfortable giving any help to anybody. I understand. I just thought I should acknowledge that. And a lot of them agreed with me. They said, well, it's true. But if not, because uh, we have been drawn into this and we decided that we are going to really do this. I promise you, even this Yoruba union, eh? honestly speaking, uh, you know, it is it's still like the, the indirect way of helping the people that will continue to defend their oppressors. And they are even willing at the last minute yeah, when their oppressors give them money and give them weapons to go after those who have been helping them when these criminals have used and dumped them. They will do it. If they are told to attack us, they will attack us. If they are told to kill us, they will kill us. I said, I know. Is that not why we call it a voluntary? It is voluntary in a way that we decided to use uh, a carrot uh, and stick approach. The carrot there is we offer an olive branch. The stick there is the truth that we are bringing. We know it has been a, a generational conditioning. But sometimes eh, they also want people to genuinely give them an alternatives and minutes. We might not have the resources to do that in a way, but we still strongly believe that, you know, it could change one, two, three. If we can change one, the mind of one, we can change the mind of uh, 10. And if we can change the mind of 10, we can change the mind of uh, 10,000. And if we can change the ten, mind of 10,000, maybe we can change the mind of 10 million. The idea is that every step, I mean, a thousand uh, mile or a thousand uh, mile journey, I will always start with a step. But it is not encouraging. Even me, myself, I sometimes feel like, should we just kind of hand off, suspend all this, and just let and wait patiently for when the people finally get to that stage of uh, fighting back. But there's something that came to my mind that changed my mind. And it was, uh, I mean, it is this, right? There were those who believed that they were fighting for democracy. Some of them died fighting the military for democracy to come in Nigeria. But when it was time for the democracy to come, Majority of them were not interested. They didn't do it because they want to be politicians, so they want to be this or that. So they left the place for the criminals who took over and led Nigeria 24 years to where we are today. Share you get. And I realized that even though they were asking for democracy, democracy, people didn't have the idea of what democracy was all about. They just wanted the military gone. So at the end of the day, they installed civilian dictatorship. And that's what Nigeria has been battling with. So if all of us are saying, let us break up Nigeria, break up Nigeria, eh? and Nigeria is finally broken up, and the all of you just felt like, eh, that's what we wanted. We just made everybody, hey, now we believe that Nigeria has broken up. Then we can then, then uh, face our country. But at the end of the day, you are not interested because you don't even have an idea the type of country you want if Nigeria breaks up. Share you get. So if you don't have the population who have the idea, charlatans will take the advantage of it. Because in power, 
there is no allow, uh, there, I mean, there, there's no room for vacuum in a game of power. So if you are planning for one day that a Yoruba nation is going to come, Biafra is going to come, you also need a country that reflects that Yoruba nation, right? You need a country that reflects, I mean, so you need the people living in a country that will reflect your nation, reflect your Biafra and all of that. You don't want a country filled with people with the same mentality that they are bringing from Nigeria. The mentality of uh, grab it, snatch it, run with it. Sure, you understand now. So that's why the idea of the Yoruba Union, if you, were to, if you are talking about a Yoruba nation that others are also pushing for, then you should be able to educate the citizens who are going to champion it to understand the type of a Yoruba nation or region they want. So little and thankless, okay? So, so minute. You don't have that huge resources, okay? I've wanted to raise, continue to raise funds here, but we've decided to do everything by ourselves behind the scene, get our membership verification set on, all other things that need to be done after our registration and all, and all that, get them done. And then begin to build it up as slowly and slowly. Then I believe that if we do our work and our job very well, we can have an educated uh, citizens. We have, the, we have the people that will understand. If they say break it up and save lives, they are not just shouting a slogan. Eh? A slogan that says, that is more or less like uh, the enemies we see today. We don't want to see them anymore. Or you have no idea. Those who are willing to take over from them and even do worse to you. It is a thankless one, okay? But indeed, we are working very much on it. But like I said, sometimes, it, I mean, I do feel like she, 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 all these things, she, she what, Sha? Just for those who usually ask me, why you go? How do you do this or that? Yeah, sometimes I do feel like she worth it, Sha. And how long are we going to actually do this to get to a stage where we really have enlightened, educated uh, minds that are not just going to know. They are going to be like, you know what I mean? A weapon of mass destruction of the world that these criminals have created and forced us to live in. You know that? Those who are educated, so sound, intelligent, and they know what they want. They are the leaders in their own ranks. Those who know that if you know better, you have to do better. And you cannot join the people who destroy the place in rebuilding the place. It is impossible. All they know is to destroy. All they know is to ruin. And all they know is to kill. They kill the dream. They destroy the dreams. They destroy the people. You cannot rebuild your lives with them. So you need enlightened, educated. I want to say enlightened and educated. I'm not talking about those who can read and write. They have been the most accursed people in this generation. They are educated but not helpful. Their education has been a cause on them. They defend the oppressors. They condemn the oppressed. They do their best to gaslight those, the victims of the oppression, thinking one day they will be invited to the table and they can feed from the crumbs they are offering them. So if you uh, indeed have been a, a crusader, that's one thing we have in mind. I said the Yoruba Unionists. It is a thankless job, and we are not promising anybody anything. We just believe that uh, if you want something, then you must work for it. We have volunteered, and I hope you will join us, or you will start something, or join others who are doing something similar. Okay? Instead of uh, following the phrase of, uh, if you can't beat them, you join them. Don't join them. Join us, call others, let's team together and follow beat them. Until then, you have a good night. Ayegun la wa mo la mo do 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 Ayegun da yaru 
dodo Mama, you're a little bit of 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 a little bit
Loto, Olodo do ilu ota ilu mama ni. Iwa shama shora aku si mabero. But a lady born in Shekunle, Kawo mama fishi ramoni. Oti dem oti mo godo si mabero. Hey, hey, kwa bolo mo ba dero ta jo godo je. Oti do balori abi no eni ku si mabu ya. Ai si wa luni eni ke godi eni la bara u oku eni do ba dero wa kamu. My hey, oti hey. Bobo ojelu e suraki ha my ekuti e bobo ojelu e suraki o eni ti Sudani mati shayi to yaki wanse, omo padero ni fi wanse.